back on BTN Live. What do you do when you're in Chicago with a free night? Well, if you're the Fighting Illini football players, you get down on the field at Wrigley Field. That's pretty good. Right down there, checking out the Cubs yesterday. Is pleased to be joined by the three men you see in that picture. Mike Dudek, Nick Allegretti, Jamal Milan. Uh, guys, first of all, what was that like? Tell me about being down on the field at Wrigley. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, you know, the whole Wrigley field outside the stadium is a great atmosphere. Um, so for us, you know, to go in game for one and be able to get to go down onto the field is pretty special. I know these guys all enjoyed it as much as I did. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Sox fan originally, but uh, it was cool, especially that successful of a team. Uh, they've had great years the last couple of years to go down, see those players that close. Got to meet uh, Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation, too, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> How long did you guys hang out down there, Jamal? Um, For about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's a good time. Uh, that's, that is neat. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your team. You guys have a very young team. You are all clear-cut leaders on this team. So I'm going to ask each one of you, how do you go about leading, particularly when you are so much more experienced than a lot of the guys around you? Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, I'm going into my fifth year, um, three different coaching changes. So, you know, I've been around it all. I've seen it all. I know how to adjust well, I mean, as all these guys do up here. Um, so having a young group, young receiver group, uh, just talk to them each and every day, make sure they're doing all right, uh, motivate them. Uh, let them know that, you know, I'm here for them and, and we got to have each other's backs and, you know, success will come. Uh, we just got to live up to the standard that our coach is setting for us. How about you, Nick? Uh, yeah, I mean, especially with the O-line, uh, big thing is building the relationship. Got to build that relationship because we are so far apart in uh, three, four years in age. Once you build that relationship, you develop trust. And then when you develop that trust, the advice you give them sticks a little bit better. Um, if you're kind of just that older guy, that leader that you don't really have a relationship, stuff's going to go out in one ear, out the other. Uh, it's not as uh, meaningful to them. So I think building that relationship and having that trust is huge. Jamal? So, yeah, going off building a relationship, our D-line has a great relationship. So our goal is just to, um, to build a mentality to become more of a threat. And um, that's one thing that um, I'm trying to instill in the D-linemen, and they're trying to do the same with me. You know, you look at this defense, and you did build some experience last year because of all the young guys who played right. nine of the top ten tacklers back for you guys. What have you seen in terms of taking the next step and development? What stood out to you? Um, really, it's just how hard people's working out. Um, you can see the mindset of everyone across the defense and offense um, change in a positive way. Um, people are really excited to um, go out there and give effort and work hard. Nick and Mike, you guys have a new offensive coordinator in Rod Smith. I'm interested from each one of you if you could kind of describe the style of offense we should expect to see from the Illini. Maybe, Nick, you can start, and then, Mike, you can fill in. Yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of uh, the offensive line play, we're going to be going fast. Uh, all spring ball, we were going fast as we could, and then we come in meetings the next day, wasn't fast enough. We go out, we go faster, and just the same message, not fast enough. So we want to go... I think it's about 12 seconds from end of play to next play. So it's going to be really quick, uh, explosive offense. we got guys out on the edge like Mikey, uh, Ricky Smalling, and then we have a really talented backfield. Uh, you got Mike Epstein, Reggie Corbin, Ravon Bonner, Dre Brown. So with all those guys, all that talent, uh, as long as the O-line does their job, we should have a really successful team. Yeah, I mean, kind of piggybacking off of what Nikki said, just, you know, up-tempo offense. Uh, electric, um, a lot of a lot of big plays can come from this offense because of the pace that comes with it. Um, so we just, you know, we got to condition uh, for one. We got to get timing down and all that. Um, and I think, you know, if we all do end up getting on the same page, uh, we could put up a lot of points this year. Your story is inspirational to a lot of people. You missed two full years due to injuries. You came back last year and performed well. Give us a sense of where you feel you are physically. Uh, yeah. So. Um, tore my ACL back-to-back -back years, um, and it was tough. You know, there were hard times. There's times where, you know, you question, you know, whether you want to keep playing football just because, you know, all you go through, not only physically but mentally. Uh, but, you know, I have guys like up here, teammates, coaches, um, that, have, that have helped me through it all. So, you know, without them, I probably, you know, wouldn't even be sitting up here, to be honest. Uh, but now, you know, I'm two years post-op, the last surgery. I'm um, feeling 100%. Um, I'm sure these guys can all attest to that. I'm, you know, I'm not getting too sore or anything anymore. Um, knee's feeling right, so, you know, I'm excited for the season. 
Jamal, you were banged up at the end of last year as yeah. well. Where are you in terms of how you're feeling? Uh, I feel great. Um, I'm being able to move a lot more. Um, change, my uh, change direction is on um, there. So uh, I'm getting more explosive. So I feel fine. I was talking with these guys about the coaching change. You have a new defensive line coach as well in Austin right. Clark. It was an interesting hire just because he's so young. He didn't have a ton of experience, but I know right. he just blew Lovey away in the interview process. Share for us, those of us who aren't around him, why? Like, what is it about him that made Lovey? I think some people would say maybe roll the dice a little bit on right. someone who doesn't have that same level of experience. So with Coach Clark, um, he brings the type of energy that a player wants. For him to be so young, he um, participates in our drills to show us how to do it. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to see a guy around our age be able to do that and coach. So with him being able to do that, it's very helpful. Nick, you've been through uh, three head coaches, right? Four offensive line coaches, another new coordinator. What's the most challenging part of that from the point of view of a player of having that kind of turnover? Uh, I would say probably the hardest thing is uh, the language. So with different line coaches, different coordinators, I've learned that football is really the same thing. It's not it's not super complicated. Everyone's going to run the same plays, uh, just the lingo. So especially those freshmen last year, it took them a long time to figure out the calls, figure out the plays. They finally got it, and then let's learn a new one. So uh, it's challenging, but the freshmen are doing a tr tremendous job with that. Uh, and then just you know, keeping that relationship because you have to be so close with your offensive coordinator, your offensive line coach. Uh, but Coach Buckus and Coach Rod, since have been here, have done a tremendous job with that. Uh, I'm super close with both of them, comfortable talking to them. If there's an issue, I feel like anybody can go talk to them and get that figured out. You guys have both graduated, both in grad school now. Tell me what you're studying. Yeah, so in December, I graduated uh, with a degree in marketing. Um, and now I'm pursuing my master's in science and technology management, and I should graduate that in this coming December as well. So what ultimately would you want to do with that once football's over? <laughs> I, I honestly, I have no clue. Um, I interned at a bank this summer um, and did commercial lending. Um, so probably something in the banking industry, wealth management type, but I have no clue. Honestly, I'm just focused on this season. How about you, Nick? Academic, all Big Ten pick, uh, somebody who does extremely well in the classroom. Where are you in, in terms of the graduate studies? Uh, yeah, so again, in December, I graduated with my accounting degree, uh, and then I will graduate in December with my master's in sports management. Uh, so... Probably will use the accounting degree, a uh, little bit of family history there. Uh, I'll either go get the CPA or potentially uh, work for a bank. Uh, Jamal, you're an academic All Big Ten pick as well, a sociology major. What interests you there? Um, really, I just wanted to learn more about people because where I come from, um, I didn't have too much of a interact with um, anyone else in the community, really. So um, I chose that path to learn more about people and just the way people think about things. What are the classes that have resonated with you the most in that area? Um, one that I love is um, deviant behavior. All right. And um, that's one thing that... Not I'm a how-to class, I hope, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No, it's um, basically learning how people think to right. um, react in a deviant way or something like that. So um, just being able to learn about those type of habits that people pick up or like even the habits that they don't know that they're showing... So it's pretty interesting. And then what, where ultimately would you want to go with that once football's done? Um, really, I'm looking more into um, helping my community um, where I grew up at. So I want to build like a, um, like a complex where I can take people in, show them a, a, a good life, and just show them what's really out there rather than what they grew up in. Well, that's admirable stuff. Uh, taking it back on the field for each one of you, as you know, external expectations are not particularly high how does that motivate this team internally uh you know we we try not to pay attention to, to any of the outside stuff coming um, we kind of try to keep everything in-house in terms of you know our goals and all that and don't listen to what people have to say the critics and all that and just use use each other's motivation i mean we know we work hard we know we're you know putting in that extra time the extra film the extra reps in the weight room so now it's just time to go out there and execute and, you know, just not worry what people have to say. Uh, Mikey was talking about your team's goals. What are some of those goals? Uh, just every time we step on the field, we have ep give ep absolutely everything we have. Uh, we have maximum or 12 games guaranteed for us every year. So never leave a game with regret. Ah, I could have done this, should have done this. Go out there, perform, 
Uh, and there's a lot of teams that are successful based on that. You give 100% effort every game. We have enough talent. We have enough speed, strength, all that to be a very successful team. What's success for this team this year, Jamal? How do you define that? Becoming mentally strong and being able to finish games. All right. Well, fellas, thank you so much. Really a pleasure to visit with all three of you, Jamal Milan, Nick Allegretti, Mikey Dudek. Thanks, fellas. Good luck this year. Thank you. Thank you.